Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and welcome to our uh, act of worship this morning, morning prayer from uh, Clitheroe. Uh, thank you for joining us. Let's take a moment together to pray and give thanks to God for all the blessings of this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we come into the presence of Almighty God, we confess our sins together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to hear the Gospel read for us by Patricia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. found myself wondering about burglars today. How are they getting on in these challenging times? By the way, Becky and I have a little running joke where we all use the phrase in these challenging times or in these unprecedented times or in this uh, unique era. Uh, just, just randomly, no, would you mind making us a cup of tea in these challenging times? Um, have you emptied the dishwasher in this unprecedented era? Um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> burglars. 
Uh, are, I believe, just doing things differently. Unfortunately, I was reading on Facebook that uh, there's a lot more what they call distraction burglars. So people will get somebody to the door and say, oh yeah, we're doing some essential maintenance work to your house or whatever. And somebody will nip in around the back, unfortunately, and steal uh, your possessions. Um, breaking and entering, I would imagine, is down because uh, most of us are stuck at home most of the time and uh, pretty difficult to you know, explain, you know, <laughs> predict when people are going to be in or out. Um, why did I think about that? Well, this morning's gospel reminds us Jesus did not break and enter. We're told the doors were locked for fear of the Jews and uh, the disciples are gathered together. They've seen Jesus be crucified. They've seen the end of all their hopes uh, and uh, dreams of what was going to happen. And so they are stuck together. <laughs> Very much like we may be experiencing being stuck together with our nearest uh, and, of course, dearest. The doors were locked, but Jesus doesn't break and enter. It's not like one of those Hollywood films where the doors fly open and, uh, boom, you know, there's that big silhouette of Jesus and uh, the, the, the white shining light. Nothing like that. We're just told that Jesus stood among them and said, peace, peace be with you. And even though uh, the doors were locked, Jesus was with his disciples. And throughout history, Jesus has appeared to his disciples when they've been locked down by persecution and through fear. Jesus has been with those who are perhaps sick at home or in hospital or in those tiny groups of Christians who suffer persecution for their faith from pretty well every government from the beginning of the church. Christians have been faithful to Christ and found that Christ is faithful to them. Because Jesus doesn't just break through into closed rooms. He breaks through into closed lives and closed minds. One of my takes on Thomas is uh, the, the, the old idea that the, he's doubting Thomas. Everyone calls him doubting Thomas, don't they? Uh, doubting Thomas isn't really what he's doing. He's not doubting. He's being faithful. He's being faithful to his, his religious beliefs. As a Jew, he would believe the resurrection would come at the end of time and everybody would be raised from the dead by God. But one man, that's not right. And so Thomas is faithful to what he believed. He might have been faithful to believe what we all know. You know, people don't come back from crucifixion. Dead men don't rise from the grave. He was being faithful to his experience uh, and to everything that life had taught him. And yet into that closed mind and that closed experience, Jesus comes again and speaks to Thomas and says, put your hand in my side, put your fingers in the holes so that you may know that it's me. As those of you who uh, do attend uh, regularly at St Mary's know my other take on St Thomas is that he is the twin. And uh, twins, if you know what twins are like, they're always joking around and pretending to be the other one. So I figure Tom is the most uh, sceptical of the disciples. So I just call him Tom then. We're not that close. Um, Thomas is one of the most sceptical of the disciples because he's done that trick. Oh yeah, that was my twin brother. Not me. So he thinks maybe the disciples have seen somebody who just looks like Jesus, a doppelganger, maybe even a twin, who knows? Just somebody who looks like Jesus. So Jesus talks to Thomas alone and says, see, it's really, really me. And even through the resurrection, Jesus bears in his body the scars of his death. Something that I, uh, I often reflect on. So, wherever you are, I pray 
not only will Jesus be with you because Jesus is with you, but that you may know that Jesus is with you. I am one of the great, uh, the great worriers. I have to confess, I am worried by pretty well everything. I worry about the future, as I'm sure we all do. What's going to happen to us in terms of illness, in terms of the economy, in terms of our jobs. But I'm also very good at worrying about the past. I am, uh, you know, a global worrier because uh, I worry about things that I've done in the past that maybe were wrong, uh, either deliberately or accidentally. Uh, and, and what have I done in the past that I can change? Well, Jesus speaks his words of peace to uh, those of us who worry. Wherever we may be and however we may find ourselves in lives, uh, Jesus says, peace be with you. Amen. Let's pray together now for the church and for the world. And let's thank God for his goodness. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we pray for your holy church throughout the world. The world. We pray for our leaders in Christ, our bishops, Julian and Philip and Jill. For our brothers and sisters in Germany and in South Africa. And for your world, for those who struggle with the coronavirus. For the work of doctors and nurses. For those who are sick. And for those who are bereaved. Father, we remember with thanksgiving those who have passed beyond this life into your eternal loving care. Remembering today John Ashworth, Kay Chanter, Ruth Blazard, and Sid Chamley, and all those memories we treasure today. Father, we pray for all those who live in Downham and Clitheroe that they may be places of peace and shared prosperity. In a moment of silence, let us join our prayers with all of God's church on earth and in heaven. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us, the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Every blessing. Bye now.